Happy almost Easter. Today is Good Friday. Um, when I think about Good Friday, it just reminds me that the outcome of it was good, but it was not such a good day for Jesus. He was actually so stressed over it that he even sweat drops of blood. Um, Luke 22:44 says, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly than his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. After that, he died in a brutal way, being crucified and tortured. There's actually, it's actually a medical condition called hematohydrosis to sweat drops of blood. So he died this criminal's death, yet he himself was certainly not a criminal. And it was a shameful way to die, to say the least. And this has caused me today to just reflect on what is the true meaning of being a Christian. Uh, a lot of people say, maybe I don't go to church because there's so many hypocrites um, that go to, ch go to church and that are there. Um, and I've heard that for sure a lot in my lifetime, that statement. Um, which is really the same thing as saying, I don't go to the gym because there's fat people there. They're hypocrites. And not everyone there is fit. It's kind of, you know, all over the place because people are going there to get in shape. But do I say forget working out because of all the hypocrites? No. And this is more of the truth about it. Church is a hospital for the sick. The sinners, it's a place for sinners for the unworthy to come and learn more what to be like, to grow in the faith. And this being true doesn't change the fact that in church today there are so many um, people there that just aren't great Christ-like examples. Are they real believers even, I ask? Is their faith transformed on a daily basis by the cross? And so I'm going to focus on the cross since today being Good Friday, and it's when we remember that Jesus died on the cross and we're supposed to take up our crosses daily as believers in Luke 9 23 it says and he said to all if anyone would come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me and also in Matthew 10 38 it says whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me then Mark 8.34 says, And calling to the crowd, to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Interesting that Jesus spoke so much of this cross before he was even crucified on the cross. He was so full of parables and prophetic words and just prophecies fulfilled. So... As believers, as Christians, there's this choice that we need to make, just like Jesus did. And we had to, be, he had to bear up the burden of his cross, his own cross. Um, he had carried it for his crucifixion. And for us, we're kind of supposed to do the same thing by taking up our crosses daily to follow him. And there's this denying of self and walking in a different direction so that it will honor God. And it's not always what we want to choose, and it's not a popular choice, for sure. He also said, blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you, and revile you, and cast you out for my name as evil, for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice in that day, and leave for joy, for indeed your reward is great in heaven, for in like manner of their fathers, did to the prophets. Wow. And that's in Luke 22. This is sort of a daily decision we make as a believer. It's not just like a one and done sort of thing. How do we choose daily? We sometimes need to do what is against our feelings too because it's what is right. And some people can grow up in the church and you cannot grow up in God. It doesn't make you a Christian. Um, he is not just an accessory or something that we sprinkle on our life every day in certain areas. Um, you have to surrender everything, God says. And Jesus is calling us to die to every desire, every dysfunction, every addiction, every ambition, and everything we've ever planned for our lives. 
and as Christians we're called not to be easily offended also, um, to not keep that record of wrongs against people. We are called to do what the Bible says, you know, to know what the Bible says we have to read it and to be transformed by it. There's a newness and a power that takes place inside our lives and our hearts. And the Bible says also that you will know them by their fruit. So is there evidence of fruit in your life? In 1 John 4.20 it says, If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God from whom he has not seen. We are called to have this great love for others, which is completely different from the world's love. Like Jesus said, he was not of this world. Uh, 1 John 3.23 says, And this is the, his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us this commandment. The cross symbolizes something great, something that was the highest price ever paid in the world. The price of our sin also was poured on Jesus, for he was so brutally murdered as an innocent, spotless lamb for us. What great love and compassion he had to be able to do this. And it says in John, greater love has no love than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Um, these are convicting verses if we take them to heart, for sure. Also, 1 John 3.10 says, in this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Because sometimes we think if we're just a good person and we stand before God that that'll be okay because we're really pretty good most of the time. But God's standard is perfection. And the Bible says if you've broken one of those laws, it's as if you've broken all of them. Just look at the Ten Commandments. Have you kept them all? Have you ever put anything before before God or ever lied? Even as a child? So, and also humility is a big one. Are we humble like Jesus? And we're supposed to be humble like him and that's kind of the key to our faith, being walking in humility. And there are people who think they're saved just because they prayed a prayer or because they attend church. And it doesn't say for God to love the world and give a prayer or a church. It says that he sent his son so that as many received him, the person, to them, he gave the right to become children of God. You have to walk with the person, the Lord Jesus, and deny yourself. That's the gospel. Take up your cross, which is a death mechanism and follow Jesus. That's the Christian faith. You think you really know Christ, but do you really know what repentance is? Repentance means change. A change of your mind. A change of your way of living and turning from your old ways. If when you come to Christ, your life doesn't change dramatically, then there's something wrong with that decision. And if you have a doubt in your heart or mind that you're not ready to meet God right now, then you need to take care of that immediately and recommit your life to Christ. By faith you receive him, and the word faith means commitment. That means you totally surrender for the rest of your life to Jesus Christ, not only as Savior, but as Lord. You surrender your personal life, your body, your mind, and you're willing to obey him and follow him and serve him. Our first love is the only thing that he receives. He won't share us. Anything we love in this life will be much better when we put Jesus first anyways. In John 8, 12, it says, Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He doesn't take away our difficulties in this life and problems when we become a believer, but he promises to give grace and strength and joy through it all. In Matthew 7, 21, it says, Not everyone who says to me, the Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but God, excuse me, but he who does the will of the Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have not prophesied in your name, cast out, 
have, have we not cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So if you're not ready now, then get ready and search yourself deep from within. And I do have one more quick verse to encourage you today in your walk. Is Ephesians 3:17 through 19, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. In other words, just let it be spilling out of you, and your fruit will follow.